Ryan McLeod, and I'm here for Team 18, which is Shapeway. Um, so as an overview of what this presentation is going to talk about, um, first I'm going to review over what was uh, discussed in DP1, which was the mission statement, the customer needs and profile, and the target specifications. Then I'm going to move on to um, the concept generation that we went through and the final decision we made on which concept to go through with. Um, so our mission statement, um, this project for VTABs required us to make a product that we could sell to college students that incorporates an Arduino and a servo motor. Um, our key um, business goals are to do just that, to market a product towards college students and to have it incorporate that type of technology. Um, the deadline is December 5th, which is coming up really fast. And currently, based on our original Gantt chart that we made, we're about a week, a week and a half off where we should be. Um, so for the target customer and specifications, we are aiming it again at college students. We want to make a product that is affordable to college students and also reliable. Um, so we decided to go with something that was more uh, do-it-yourself, where it would, we basically send a customer a kit because college students, like they're getting edu like educated, they're smarter than like say a toddler in elementary school. So we believe that if we give college students a kit, they'd be able to put together our product. And by doing this, it keeps down the price. Um, for the specifications, our two biggest. Um, specifications that we were after were average service, um, which is like how much um, maintenance do you have to really do, to like how long will it take to build it, and then um, for that maintenance we want um, our product to somehow alert the customer about if, if there's a problem. Um, so for functional decomposition, we arranged four sub-functions, which were user input, power, blind operation and mechanical interface. So for user input, this is um, a way that customers, if they want the, the automatic blinds to um, like open or close on their own input, say um, you need to change and the blinds are open, customers need to have a way to close the blinds. So um, we set four functions, uh, the computer, light sensor, Bluetooth, and remote. And um, of these four, the most, the most viable option will most likely be the computer because uh, it's just most just college students have computers. For power, our Arduino and the servo motor used to twist the blinds open or sh shut needs to have um, some sort of power going to it. So our three options are the power supply, the battery, and solar panels. Um, the blind operation is how we actually like physically open or close the blinds. And our two options here were a pulley and mass, where you would lift weight and then have the pulley uh, tug on the blinds, or we would go with the servo motor. And then for mechanical interface, this is how we actually connect to that blind, where you have like that pole that comes up for the blinds, so you have to twist it. So there needs to be a way to actually like grip that. So our three options were the chuck, pellet and a hose clamp. Um, so for concept generation, we came up with six concepts. Um, and of these six, are the one that we decided to choose was solution five, which is uh, down right here. And it's a computer, battery, servo, and chuck. Um, the solution two and solution um, one both use pulleys and weren't really viable because we didn't really figure out how to get them when you use the pulley mass, the ma when the mass falls, we didn't really know how to get it back up <laughs> to, so that we could use it again. So we kind of um, got rid of those options pretty fast. So in class, we um, put those uh, pictures you just saw on the previous slides together into a poster, and we had a day where we um, showed our poster off in the gallery method. And we got a lot of feedback. So a lot of the feedback wasn't really helpful and it was really kind of all over the place where some feedback was like, oh, the light sensor's great. Oh no, like the Bluetooth's great. And so 
it really was, uh, it didn't really help us make a decision. But one thing that was really interesting that we got out of one of the um, sticky notes was that they recommended instead of twisting the blinds open or shut, just pulling them up or pulling them down. That might be easier, they said. So that was an interesting suggestion we didn't really think about. Um, so for concept selection scoring, we had a tie between solution four and five. Of these two solutions, we decided to go with solution five. And this is mainly because um, it, it was, solution five was the solution we kind of had envisioned since the beginning. It had um, the exact uh, functions that we thought we would be needing to use. So it uses a computer, it uses a servo motor, which was required for the project. Um, and it uses a battery to power that servo motor. So it, this was what we really wanted from the beginning and after our grading it turned out that, that was the best solution. So in class recently we were able to develop a prototype and um, this prototype I also have right here. Um, we have it working where Currently, I can't show it off working because it requires right now for the Arduino to be plugged in to a socket, which I just, I can't, like, the cable won't run to here. But essentially, we have the Arduino and it has, so in class when we used the servo motor, um, it was a six volt battery that went to the servo motor to power it, but the battery we were given for this project was a nine volt, so in our breadboard we have um, some, res some resistors that uh, divide that voltage so that we can give the servo the correct amount of voltage. And um, in the back here, um, we have the battery, um, the servo motor, and this would be our chuck, which clamps onto um, the pencil, which the pencil is technically, it would be that pole that you twist your blinds open and close. And, um, the cardboard box is just a representation of what the chassis for the uh, design would be. We have it opened in the back so that you can see the inside of it functioning. Um, yeah, I mean, it it works, and it was really we were really impressed by how much torque we got out of the servo because one of the main concerns from the gallery method um, that we got was that there might not be enough torque, but we were able to twist the pencil f fairly easily and. Um, we'll have to do more testing going uh, from this to see if we do have enough torque, but if not, we can always uh, make, we can get a beefier servo motor. So, summary and future goals. Going further, uh, what we have to do is we have to design the CAD files and we have to create the Arduino code. So currently our prototype here, it just runs the basic Arduino servo motor, uh, servo, servo motor code, which basically just, it makes the servo turn 360 for forever until the Arduino is empowered. Um, we're gonna have to adjust that code so that the Arduino times um, what hour it is in the day, and then it turns based on the time of day so that it opens in the morning and closes at night. Um, on top of that, for the CAD file, we have to actually create a CAD file that shows the physical chassis and how everything sits inside of it, because right now we don't really have that design. We just kind of cut into a box the dimensions we needed. Um, additionally, we're gonna have to do some testing on the servo motor because we're not sure if it will get enough torque. Um, so yeah, even though we're behind about a week, um, we have Thanksgiving break coming up, and that's when we're probably gonna do a lot of our testing and uh, design for the